Let's talk a little bit more about HTML elements as objects. Um, now, in the previous video, you saw me access the body element, and therefore the body element object, using document.body. Okay, and that, that's great, that works, but that's not going to work for most elements. You've seen us use um, more precise ways of targeting elements, like document.getElementById, um, and we need to use methods like that in order to target specific elements in our code. The body just happens to have this uniquely accessible shorthand. All right, so in this case, I've added a div inside my body element with an ID of my div. If I write document.div, nothing's going to happen. If I write document.body.div, if you thought of that, then that's an excellent thought, and that's um, wonderful that your brain went in that direction, but that's not going to do anything either. We need to use a method like document.getElementById, and then we use the unique ID of the element we're looking for, as a an argument for that function just like that so when I hit enter it returns to me the div element itself in the HTML markup that's great <clears throat> and now I can access the inner text property of that div for example and insert some text and there we go our div now contains some text notice that document.getElementById, my div, is a compound statement that I can now use any time to directly refer to, to directly reference the div that I want to manipulate. Every time the JavaScript browser sees document.getElementById, my div, that whole statement is going to evaluate to the HTML element itself. So I can attach dot inner text to this line just like this to access a property of that element. <clears throat> or change a property of that element. At the same time, and this might be um, something that I would recommend for all of you because it can help keep your code cleaner and easier to navigate at this point in time is to create a shorthand variable. I'm just going to create a variable called my div, and in that variable I'm going to store document.getElementById my div. So that now I can simply type my div to reference the element we want to manipulate rather than this whole line of code every time. I can access the inner text of that element by typing my div dot inner text. And it will still work. My div is simply a shorthand now, a placeholder that refers to our element. Now if you wanted to do some more research and figure out what kind of properties this div object has that you can manipulate, um, it's going to be difficult to find by trying to just call it up in the console, because that's always going to re return to you the HTML markup like this. That's not useful for figuring out what's in there. Now if you watched me closely from the last video, you might think to do this, and you know that's great, that does return the element and you can actually see all of the properties that can be helpful, but it can also be a little overwhelming. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. What you might want to take notice of here is the fact that this object which returns has this moniker of HTML div element. HTML div element. That means somehow the browser, the JavaScript engine, knows exactly what type of element this is. It knows it's a div element. So let me go ahead and copy HTML div element, and I'm just going to Google it, see what comes up. The very first link that pops up is this link to developer.mozilla.org, or the MDN web docs, the Mozilla Developer Network. And this is a good 
resource for really digging into some more more involved JavaScript. If you don't feel ready for this, that's completely fine. I don't want you you to get sidetracked by a lot of new information. But if you really want to try to visualize all these moving parts, get an idea of what's going on behind the scenes, the MDN web docs are a great place to come to. We're going to revisit these in a couple of weeks, so don't stress them too much just now. But again, for the moment, if you are interested in finding all of the properties of a specific element, you can come here. So I'm in this page, HTML div element in MDN web docs, came up with a quick Google search, and there's this section called properties. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And there's only one in here, which doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right to me. The reason is because this says right above it that the HTML div element inherits properties from its parent HTML element. Well, that must be some other kind of HTML element object, right? So I'm going to click on that. And if the HTML div element inherits its properties from the HTML element, then these are the properties that I can access on my div. .dir, .hidden, .lang, .nonce, .offset top, .offset width, .style, .title. I may not know what any of these are or what they do. That's OK. But if you have a specific goal in mind, this is the place to come to find out. Dot style is one that you have seen me use and which we will be using quite a bit in the future. So I'm going to click on HTML element dot style. So the HTML element dot style property is used to get as well as set the inline style of an element. That's interesting. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to select my div in my console. I'm going to access its style property. And first, let's just press Enter and see what comes back. This is a weird object called CSS style declaration. But if I open it up, inside is actually every possible CSS property you could ever apply to any element anywhere. <laughs> There's font weight, font variation settings, grid, all these grid settings that we don't use, inline, letter spacing, margin left, margin right, margin top, margin bottom, padding, um, right, quotes, position, scroll behavior, source, speak, size. All of these are CSS properties that you should be familiar with, and some that you might not be, but that's OK. Um, notice that margin bottom is actually camel cased. Whereas if we were to write this in our CSS, we would use a hyphen. And that's the only thing that you need to remember when accessing CSS or style properties using JavaScript. Anywhere that you would see a hyphen in regular CSS, it is going to be converted to camel casing for JavaScript. That's the only tricky part that you need to remember. All right, so let's say I wanted to access the background color of this div using JavaScript. I'm going to select my div. I'm going to access the style property. And I'm going to access the background color property of the style object of the my div object. Okay, And I'm going to set that equal to red. And that changes the background color of the div. Notice that background color, which is usually written with a hyphen, has been camel cased. But once again, I access the background color property of the style object of the div and set it equal to red. I could just as easily set it equal to a hex code or an RGBA code. Any, any recognizable value for a CSS property will work here. Just note that any value you plug in needs to be in string form. It's always going to need to be in quotes, even if it's a number. Um, let's try height. 
dot style dot height. Let's set it equal to 400 pixels. Okay, that must be in quotes. It must be a string. I cannot run it without those quotes, or we will get an error. Okay, 400 pixels must be encased in quotes as a string, and then it will work. All right, so that's the style object of an HTML element object, and the Mozilla Developer Network web docs developer.mozilla.org is a good place to come for some additional research if, for whatever reason, W3Schools or a more cursory Google search has not solved your issue. It is very easy to get lost in the Mozilla Developer Network, so try to leave yourself some breadcrumbs. Don't get sucked in if uh, it starts to overwhelm you.